Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to bring in the C3D files that we recorded in Vicon into the software Motion Builder and attach it to an actor ready to retarget that onto a um, 3D model. So on the, on the Moodle system, we've got some C3D files. Within this, we've got a C3D zip folder. I'm going to click on that and hopefully that will download. So that's got some C3D files that we've recorded from another session and um, we can use for this demonstration. The other things within here are some different characters. So we've got one called Aragor, Bone Skeleton Characterized, Gremlin, and Mia char Characterized. So I'm just going to download one of these as well. Okay, so now I've downloaded these, these, two, these files, so I'm just going to find find these and just put them onto my desktop um, and I'm going to just create a folder there um, and so just create a new folder I'm just going to call it motion builder and drop those two files in uh, if I can find them so gremlin was one and C3D was the other one. So then I'm just going to extract the C3D files and that should come into a folder and if I have a quick look inside there I've got one called Dance, one called Easy and one called ROM001. ROM if you remember was, uh, stands for Range of Motion. So the next thing I'll do is open up Motion Builder, which is the software I'm going to use to use with this. And that'll take a short while to, lo to load up. And then I can import these files. And I'm going to import them all at once. So sometimes people will import one at a time, but I really want to get them all in at once. And then they come in in the same hierarchy. Because when you export a C3D file from the Vicon system, it will quite often have the, the actor's name, unless you specified that you didn't want that. Um, and if you import them in separate ones, they can come into separate hierarchies, but I want to use them as one block. I could try and explain that in, in a moment. Um, so the first thing I'll do is motion file import from the file menu. I'll just click on that, and I'll find the files I'm working with. C3D files, and I can just select them all. I'm shift clicking the, click on the top one, shift click the, the last one, and then I'm going to click open. That'll give me a dialog box. Like I say, you've got the same, op the option here in same hierarchy. That's really important to get that one um, selected. And you've also got an option of keeping the actor prefix or not. Um, sometimes you'll want to keep that, sometimes you won't. And I'm just going to import that with the actor prefix. And what happens then is I get the same kind of point cloud in this window when I play it as I did when we were working with the Vicon system itself. Now I've set up Motion Builder to work with the, uh, the uh, Maya tool, the Maya kind of interface, so I can move it in the same way as I would Maya. Um, and so this is a dance take. If I click on where it says dance on this take, I can swap it for another one called Easy. Now, I'm not sure what Easy is. Um, it sounds like someone has named, named it after the type of take, because there's an Easy option for the type of take that they would use. Um, but it looks like it's, it's a walk. So walking forwards and walking backwards, or waiting maybe. He's looking at a watch and then walking forward. Um, and the other thing I'll point out here, I can notice that on this take, um, it's actually trying to sit down there as well, I think. On this take, what I'm noticing is the, the hand has got a very kind of wide, if I can just try and point that out, if I can, um, it may be, uh, there's a very wide distance between the, the thumb and the pinky on the hand. 
and that was extended beyond the hand by using, I think we stuck some markers to a pen and he was holding a pen just so we would get the markers on the hand a lot wider because sometimes they swap. So that was, a, that was something we were trying out on this and it's probably a bit unique to this, this file. Um, so the, the other take is the range of motion and I'm going to start with that and this is where we're going to start actually working with the file and um, turning this into, actually it doesn't look like it's a range of motion, it looks like it's a walk. So that's badly named. Um, but I can go into the takes on the, on the navigator window and I can see where it says ROM and I can right click that and say rename. So I'm just going to rename that as walk um, and I can rename that when I want um, to whatever I want it to be. So I'm just finding this, this pose here, which is the T pose. We talked about that before. And I can see I'm just looking at the head movement and making sure the head is pointing forwards within this scene here. And the first thing I want to do after just looking at the file is to go to the resources and the asset browser here and click on the characters option. And within that, we've got a few options. And one of these is called Actor. I'm going to pick up that Actor and drop it into the viewport here. And that will bring up a few more options for characters within that. I've got it on the right over here, but also in my Navigator, which is the main work area that I would use. So I'm actually going to make my Navigator window a bit larger. And following that, what I want to do is line up the actor to the point cloud. So I'm just going to click on the, the hips of this actor because I know that's the root of this and it will all move together if I do that and just pull it forward slightly for this and essentially it's, it's not a bad fit and I'm just going to adjust it so it seems quite central. I could potentially take these legs out slightly just to sort of bring them nearer to the points and it will click into place a bit later anyway when they when they work together when they when I when I finish the process so that's essentially lining up the character the actor to the point cloud so that there's there's as much fit as possible I'm then coming down to this navigator and if you haven't got the actor selected you may have clicked on something else within the scene um, perhaps the optical parts, um, looking at the, the different data within that. You'll need to go down and look down this navigator window for where it says actors and double click on the actor here to bring that up. You can also rename that if you want to. Um, and I know that the, actor, the actions were done by someone called Juan, so I'm going to rename it as Juan. And then I have to define which parts of the point cloud relate to which part of the actor. So I need to create what's called a marker set from within this. So I click on marker set create and what that gives me is a, a list of um, well a, a range of kind of circles within this, this actor here and I can drop on these markers onto that. So what I do, I expand the, the markers on the, from the scene here, 3D optical markers, and I want to drop them onto the positions which they relate to. So the first five here are called root, left front waist, right front waist, left back waist, right back waist, and they all, you can see where these are in the, in the guide, and if I zoom in on the, the system there, I can see that they've turned green as I've selected them. So as I select them again, they turn green, and I can recognize that those are the, the ones that I've got selected. And I'm going to drag them from the navigator window onto the part of the body which they relate to. So the waist and the root, I can just drop on there, and that turns into the number five. So I'll click on that, and I can see which ones I have on there. If I have done the wrong one, I can click on that and press delete, and it will go away. So if, I, if I've made a mistake, I can change that, and I can actually add that back in um, as well. So what I'll do, I'll just go down the list here, uh, and I can see this is left thigh and left knee. 
So I'm going to drag that onto the actor's left leg there on the knee part. And it's my right, but the actor's left, because the actor will be facing me within this. Um, I'm just going to try and make a bit more room so we can see the other parts down here. So we've got ankle. So the next one, two are shin and ankle. And I'm pressing both of those and, and dragging them at the same time. Uh, I've got a heel. So I'm just going to put heel on its own on that one. You can double them up. You can put heel and ankle on the same, same one or use ankle twice. Um, I'm not in this instance, but you may need to. So, um, and then it's the same on the other side. Right thigh and knee, right shin and ankle, um, right heel, uh, right toe and right metatarsal, um, which is the little toe, uh, or MT5, which is the fifth metatarsal. And then we come up to the, the top of the spine, and you have a range of ones you can use for the back. Um, in this instance, I'm going to use the sternum, the top of the spine, uh, the mid-back, and I'm allowed five, so I'm actually going to use a couple of the shoulder ones as well, the left front shoulder and the right front shoulder, and I'm going to drop that onto the chest. The, there is about three different types of shoulder, so be aware of that. I'm going to skip down to left front head, right back head, and aerial. So you've got the five there, the, the four on the head, and the aerial one on the top. And they can just drop onto the head one. Um, and then we're working on left shoulder. And I'm going to drop that onto the left shoulder. We've also got left front shoulder and left right shoulder, which I'm going to drop onto that shoulder as well. So we have to go back a bit to find those. Um, uh, left upper arm and elbow, I put them both on the elbow area. Uh, left forearm and wrist, again there's two on that bit. Uh, left thumb and left pinky, which is your little finger. So again, right shoulder, I'm nearly there with this. Right shoulder and right front shoulder, right rear shoulder. I'll just drop those all onto the shoulder there. Then. I will do uh, elbow and forearm for the right. Drop that onto those. Right wrist. Uh, no, I think I'm confused there. Right elbow and upper arm is what I really wanted for that one. So I'm just going to drop the upper arm on there as well and take off the forearm. Uh, use forearm and wrist on that one. And the last one is the right thumb and the right pinky. So that essentially is all of these linked up to the different objects, different parts of the body on the actor. And you've got a list of them all there. I can click on them. I can click on the parts again just to see what they are. And at this stage, I just want to do a save. So I'll just do a save as and save it back into the folder that I was working to. And give it a name. I'll give it a name of the actor. And this save options are reasonably comprehensive, but basically you can turn on and off elements you want to save out um, and which takes you want to save out. And for me, take 001 was empty, so if I didn't want to save that, I can turn it off on that sw switch there and just press save. And so that's saved that in that, that instance there. And now I really want to go into... Um, a better view of this this window up here because I'm going to do what's called activate well I'm going to press activate on the actor and that will click this into place so keep your eyes on, on this area here I just click this box here and you see it snapped into place a bit there with the with the actor um, I can then play this and you'll see that the actor moves along with those elements if I make it a, into a preview layout, we can see that a lot better. So you see this is the walk. And you see it's broken up because it's moved out of the area there. But you've got quite a good pacing of the walk across there. Um, and so you can see the head turns. He's possibly looking at the screen as he goes through. Um, so from there, it's good quality. He's looking forward. Um, and as I switch between them, if I want to look at the dance, I can see the salsa dance here. Um, and so the, the actor has been linked in once, but it's usable in, in many different ways.